What's up, everybody? I'm DJ Sixbit. You're watching Sit Down. Rob Yang is here with us. American Rust is a brand new show on Showtime. Rob, really nice to meet you, man. How are you? Hello, hello. It's uh, very nice to meet you, too. Um, I picked the, uh, the worst angle of the hotel room. <laughs> I can find. Um, you, know, you know it's a hotel room because there's a Keurig machine, which... Uh, <laughs> I like that refrigerator you got back there. That's, uh, that's a little bit of a yeah. different feature. Yeah, you know, it looks it looks kind of cool, but it's basically a souped up um, like mini fridge. Like the freezer is like a sliver. And that's there. always the worst. You, you can't yeah. freeze anything, especially you're, you're on shoot in Georgia. It's like, how are you supposed to keep anything cold in there for, for days a week or whatever? I know. How, how, where am I supposed to put my meat shipment that I get in? <laughs> yeah, the, all the boxes of meat. Uh, yeah, you're pretty, pretty limited in what you can bring back to the hotel room there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's purely made for the the weekend vendor or something like that. I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every everything's like miniature slots for the mini booze and and all this open carry that they have here. I'm in Savannah, Georgia, right now, um, and uh, it's it feels like a party outside all the time. So it, well, that's uh, the cool it thing about being an actor, right? You just get to pop into all these different places, Savannah, Georgia. American Rust, yeah. that's a different experience, right? Succession you've done. What's that like for you when you're just popping into all these different places? You're shooting one place and sometimes you're portraying an entirely different place that may not be that place. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I love, um, well, first of all, I realized that uh, how little I need by going <laughs> to all these places that um, my life can be put into a little rolly bag, essentially. And, and I wear the same stuff all the time. Just a hoodie, um, no that's all you need. You got your rolling bag. You got the hoodie, hoodie, you know. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I have the shirt off when I go get ice down the fridge. <laughs> you know, it's, I take my chances because it's like 5 a.m. You roll anyway. the dice. You're hoping nobody else is yeah. up in the hotel at that point. Yeah. I, I still pump up the air lats while I'm walking though down the hall. <laughs> you, you never know if somebody peeks out their door. That's true. You know, I get the back shot of you. You know, I don't I want to want to represent um but i i enjoy uh going to all these cities um it, I mean, i've never been to savannah we um we shot uh, american rust in uh in southwestern pennsylvania um on location um out of pittsburgh and that was a completely new place uh for me that i probably otherwise wouldn't have gone to maybe or maybe stopped in to to put gas in my car, maybe, <laughs> but to, to live there for six months, it's, it's, uh, I love it. I love it. It's, uh, it's one of the nice things about, um, it, I it, guess, it's really you fascinating know. when you think about it, right? You spent six months there. It was a huge part of your life, a big chunk of your year. So when you think about that show, that experience, what was most fascinating to you when you reflect on it now? Um, well, with, uh, I guess, what was the most fascinating? I, I was really struck by the town there um it's it's incredibly beautiful um the whole southwestern pennsylvania pittsburgh area it's because it's 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 like this historical time capsule the architecture and so i i, I just loved being there um i stayed in uh this place so it was like a, a warehouse loft uh, but just just going around the town and it's you know i, I spent some time with uh local pd um to get my uh cop game on and uh it's it was just uh to to take a look at a town that really uh you, you can just feel the industry that used to be there uh the vacuum left there and then and then it rejuvenating um to like uh, they're, they're trying to promote tech and and all that but then you see all these like houses that look amazing, like hipsters all over the country, like in New York and Brooklyn would be salivating at these, these color <laughs> palettes that, that they have. And, and, and all these like warehouses that would make like great coffee shops or like cool clothing store fronts. Uh, but, but they're not, they're not kept up. So you literally have um, some buildings that were, you know, you have a building, one that's completely gutted out because there was a fire, but it wasn't raised at all. So, so the structure's just there as, you know, next to another house. <laughs> and, and it's just, uh, shooting there is just incredible. You know, they, we had, uh, you know, they, they did do storefronts and, you know, like uh, 
the the art department uh, and, and the design to modify things, but it was incredible. It just it just really felt cinematic without having to do anything really. And it, bridges everywhere, these these old bridges and and rivers and trains going by constantly. Um, working trains, you know, and barges going by. I, I just really thought that was that was really um, a part of the show, the environment. It was so it was, it was really nice to to actually shoot in location instead of I don't know being in California and pretending like you know like there was a, a steel mill somewhere. Maybe it's like that would a be a little difficult, mill. right? That'd be a little tough. <laughs> Although uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure. People do that in other shows all the time. Um, you know, acting with green screens and, and tennis balls on sticks. And, yeah. Well, there's an authenticity to it when you do it there and you get to meet the local cops and you get to be there and see what it's all like. So what were some of the keys in you pulling off the cop game? What did you really have to make sure you hone in on here? Well, you know, you know I, um, when I got the part, I've never played a cop before. And for me, it was important to, to respect the, prof the profession by actually um, trying to get a sense for what, what it would take to actually be a cop if it was me. Uh, so I told production about, um, you know, the fact that I've never fired a gun in my life. <laughs> and, uh, so they, they set me up with um, uh, a SWAT guy in LA before I came out, spent some time with him and, I felt so soft, uh, and and then and then when I got to Pittsburgh, they they uh, set me up with uh, a police consultant, this guy named Dale, and then then I went um, to a local precinct um, with this guy uh, uh, Charlie and spent time with him, and just a, a lot of these guys have had special forces or like SWAT training and. And again, I felt so soft again. So, so really, like I, I spent time like shooting guns with them, having the carrying the equipment, just learning about basic procedures, like what the day in the life of the cop is, and kind of trying to fill out that uniform. Um, it's, you know, they they didn't, you know, with costumes, they didn't they didn't do any tailoring. It was just a uh, standard uniform on the shelf, and it doesn't matter how, how much, like, I, like I tried to get stronger to, to, Try to play buff a up a little bit, bulk up a little bit here. Yeah. But I put this uniform on and I was like, man, it's, it's just, I feel like I'm, I'm camping inside of a tent. <laughs> You're <laughs> you know, swimming just, in that thing. <laughs> yeah. What, what am I like wrestling, trying to lose weight in this like garbage bag here? <laughs> um, it, it was, uh, it was, it was tough to fill it out to really, really feel the legs under me because you know, like part of it was the uniform and it's like for me to believe that I actually have done the training and, and, and understand what's going on and what it's like to be a cop. So, so I, I, you know, I'm so thankful I got to spend time with, with these guys. And then, and then I started to feel like, Oh yeah, now I got, now I feel like it's in my legs. Like it felt like my legs were so weak because uh, I'm not used to doing these squat, like these like SWAT procedures where you're trying to like clear a room and the, the way you walk without, you know, creating that much of a footprint um, and how you clear spaces. I, I thought it was really cool. And I just scratched the surface. And then I show up and then I realize, hey, you know, it actually doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know I guess. after all that work you put it yeah because it was uh it was funny um like uh the first one of the first times we had to uh with me and I, most of my scenes were with uh jeff daniels and um so we had this police consultant dale um on set and he, he was great so i spent all this time and we show up to shoot um you know jeff you know jeff's just like okay so what what do you what you know how, how do you enter the room and then the guy you know will say oh you go in this way and just do that okay so i'll just do that and then here i am with like trying to do the training and then and then it's basically like oh no just just do what he's doing <laughs> 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 yeah so so it's uh 
I, I, I think um, most of the time, whatever makes you feel comfortable so you don't have to think about what you're actually doing um, is helpful. And so I, 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 I'm glad I did, did uh, the work with the cops. I'm glad I made friends with them and, and, and understood what's going on right now with crime in, in the city. I think that it's very real. Um, I had no idea, you know, um, that 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 there's there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of drug related crime, which is like anywhere else in the the country. So so I think it's um, you know just because it seems like pretty pretty calm, you know, at nighttime, it, you know, pockets. I think in a, in a lot of places are a lot a lot of stuffs going down that you have no idea about, um, especially. You know, someone like me who grew up in the suburbs. Um, yeah, it's amazing how much we talk about and amazing how much we don't focus on because it's just everyday life, right? It just gets swept under the rug. And even in a show like this, where a story becomes much bigger in terms of the search and everything involved there, like that's a whole different layer, like the stuff that actually gets the coverage versus the stuff we don't talk about. I'm sure it was a really big learning experience for you there. Yeah, I mean, the, the story very much is about, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's traditionally been a quiet town, but now it's like big city crimes that are popping up. And a lot of it is fueled by drug use. Um, fentanyl is a big thing. Um, that's current. It's absolutely current. I mean, yeah. just like you've got the recent news of cocaine uh, laced with fentanyl and people dying. Um, that's like right in the, the script uh, in the story with American Rust. That's that's what's going on in this town. It's, uh, you know, um, people are, are ODing because they're, they're taking something, they, they, they have no idea that they're even taking this fentanyl. They think they're taking something else. And then, um, you know, it's, I, 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 think, I think that's a very, very real subject matter that that's a backdrop of, of our show. I think one of the great things about the show is like you mentioned, it deals with all this real subject matter. And then it's great actors like you and Jeff and Maura Tierney. When you think about just working with those folks, what did you learn the most from them having spent you know, six months of your life hanging around them? Uh, yeah, it, it was like a master class watching these guys. Um, you know, I, I had, um, you know, and, and I, I, think I, I think I passed the Jeff Daniels test uh, what is the Jeff Daniels test? Can we can we get that first? Yeah, you know, um, well, I think I, I passed. I haven't been home in LA for a while, so my re report card is probably <laughs> in the mail, like unopened. Um, it's like it's uh, the, the 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 Jeff Daniels test is basically uh, be prepared um, when you show up. Be prepared, and if you're not, go home. <laughs> You know, there's, there's really no excuse. It's kind of, and it, it's fair enough. You know, it's Jeff, he, he has this incredible ability to just learn massive volumes of material. So he'll, he'll show up like if, if, okay, if he's got two pages of a monologue that he's, he can rip through at the very start of rehearsal, you know, just like right away. And you've got a couple lines, you can't get that down, then then really he's got he's got no sympathy for you. So so that's that's sort of the Jeff Jeff Daniels test. I think if you're serious about what you do and you're professional and you're prepared um, and you're not uh, you know self-indulgent, uh, tell the story um, and just do that. You know, it's not about you, it's about the story we're trying to tell. So so it's 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 it was it was great working with Jeff and and I'll, and and Maura and, and Bill Camp and and the 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 younger cast too like I, I really loved working with everybody it was you know I showed up on set when I wasn't working just to watch the acting on the monitors because I, I just wanted to learn learn from everyone and and see the the filmmaking side as well and they they opened everything up to me so it's really awesome and i love that because you've been in the industry for so long you've been on so many different shows but that's still such a cool opportunity and even you know i think about some of your other work like succession you know like you pop in there playing lawrence you know you have the 
the feuding going on with Kendall. I would imagine that was just an incredible experience for you. But why do you think that show resonates so deeply? What makes that one stand out compared to some of the others we've done? You mean you mean Succession or yeah. Succession? Uh, I you know I I think it's that that show I think caught on. You know I I think I think the show the things that do the best in my opinion, are the ones where it, it's, it's not universally, like initially universally loved by everybody. So, but if it creates strong feelings in people, like I think with Succession, um, I think a fair number of people initially were like, oh, these people are awful. I don't wanna watch this show. This is terrible. Um, but then people started liking it. Um, I think through word of mouth and then they got to actually see how messed up and how universally <laughs> messed up these, these people are and, and in a funny way, but without necessarily playing it for comedy. Um, so, so I, I, I think, I think the, that a show like that just kind of caught on cause it, 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 it hit, it hit a lot of, uh, the, the buttons I think that make people like want to binge a show, you know, you just, you can't believe somebody did something or you want to see what happens next, or, you know, and, and I think, I think the writing um, is really great on that show. Um, and they did a really great job casting it too, um, because I think uh, uh, for the most part, like you, you're not, you're not directed. You know, it, this is like you, you pick the right people who can show up and they just naturally gravitate towards choices. You know, um, you don't have to tell them what to do and they, they they just find the scene with their other actors, you know, and or or, or you know, it's, it's how they clash up against each other. So it's, it's kind of that perfect mix of great writing and directing and then the right cast uh, bringing it to life. And, and, and I feel the same thing about American Rust. I really do. It's, it's just, uh, I think the, the writing and, and, and Dan, Dan uh, Futterman and the, the, uh, the writing team he assembled, I, I, I got along with everyone. I, I really love the scripts. And, you know, I initially, when I uh, was looking at the part, um, I, I, I I knew it was based off of a book and it, I was, I was personally as an Asian American actor, I was, I was shocked that this book that was written some time ago about this very white town, essentially, it's very, a white area had um, an Asian cop character in it. So, so I, I thought that was great. And then, and then when they did that, you know, adapted this for television, uh, they, you know, they, they kept, the Asian character. So I was a big fan of that because it, it didn't, it wasn't like he just happened to be Asian, but it wasn't like, you know, like I, I don't have to do Kung Fu unless I want to. Uh, I mean, you could bust it out, but it's nice <laughs> that the book had it and it didn't have to be reimagined. It already yeah. existed. That's the thing you're hitting yeah. on. Yeah. And it, and it was really great that, um, you know, they made the character Korean. It was Chinese and, uh, in, in the book. And so, so they did tailor it to me. Um, so that, that was, that was nice. Well, that's um, huge. I mean, folks can watch a Korean cop in Pittsburgh in the Rust Belt doing his thing. I mean, that goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's meaningful to, to people who, to see, you know, some, someone like me playing a character like that, that isn't, it's not, just about what ethnicity you are, you are. It, that's not what the story centers around. It's just, it's just that you, you know, if you took a slice of uh, any town in, in America, you know, you're gonna have, you're probably gonna have someone like Steve Park in there. And he just happens to be a cop in this town. And now I was interested in um, this story because when I, when I, when I read the script, the first thing I was thinking was, how, how did this guy end up here? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, you know, what, this guy's Asian, he grew up there. Why did he stay in town? You know, what's keeping him there? 
And, and that, that's something that I wanted to figure out because I thought that was pretty interesting. Like, why, why not go somewhere else? Uh, why, why stay in a small town? And, um, you know, he's got parents um, in, in the actual script that they talk about um, Steve Park's uh, parents own um, a restaurant in town. And so, so that, you know, you know, just based off of the writing, you know, I was like, oh, you know, okay, I, I get that, you know, it's, it's kind of the story of the, of, of uh, American Rust, um, like everyone's negotiating, um, you know, how much of themselves to give up to take care of somebody else, you know, and, and for Steve Park, I think it's, uh, you know, he's in town because his parents are, are old, um, they own a restaurant and he's probably hanging back because he feels like he's got to take care of them. Um, maybe he has a crush on a girl in town too. I don't know. Well, Could there's be. so many different layers to his story and this story in general. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, I can, I, mean, I can, I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's just so many different it. layers to it. I, I get it, man. Listen, yeah. I spent so much time on it. I really feel like folks are going to get into it over the next couple of weeks, right? The, you know, the Emmys have passed. We're looking for a new show. And sort of like your honor for Showtime a few months ago, I feel like this kind of has those vibes that people will find it and love it. And I'm sure you're super excited yeah. about that. Yeah, I am excited. You know, it's, um, I, I like it because it's very filmic. It's, it's got a very cinematic movie feel to it. It's like a long movie told in eight parts. So, so really the, you know, as, as you start watching it, um, it, it really like more and more stuff keeps happening, obviously that um, I, I think it's going to be pretty compelling. You know, if, if you, um, yeah, it's just, I, I, I would, this is, this is a show I would absolutely, if I weren't in it, I would absolutely be one of the people out there wanting to watch it. Um, just, just uh, as an actor, but also as like the kind of work that I appreciate. It's like kind of the, the more um, gritty film sort of stuff, but the cast is incredible. I, I'll watch anything with, with Jeff Mora and Bill, Bill Camp in it. You know, it's so it's uh, I'm, I'm I'm grateful to be a part of it. No doubt about it. Well, Rob, really nice to meet you, man. Thank you so much for the time. Pleasure talking to you. And we'll definitely check it out on Showtime. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It's great meeting you.